the repeated use of an inherently dangerous restraint technique. It was horrible. It was very, very horrible and inhuman. Unnecessary pain was inflicted on men during use of force incidents. When immigration detention centres were contracted out to the private sector more than 20 years ago, the law said they should be secure, humane, dignified. Instead, this. Today, the first inquiry to penetrate behind these walls reveals a toxic culture of racism, bullying and silence about the violence meted out to asylum seekers at Brook House near Gatwick in 2017. A culture many say lingers. One Home Office manager told the inquiry that if someone spent more than 24 hours at Brook House, you're going to develop mental health issues. It's not a nice place to be. Pius was trafficked from Ghana to the UK where he was forced to work in a warehouse by a criminal gang. But in 2002, he managed to escape one hell just to enter another. Finding myself in a country where I don't even know anything about and thinking the authorities will help me, I end up being punished this way. I feel very, very stressed and very, very disappointed. He spent years in and out of immigration detention centres, one of them Brook House, where he says the man he shared a room with was beaten up as he was taken to board a flight. Officers begin to kind of like punch him as much as they can, not only one officer, but so many officers punching. And punch punching him. him physically on his face, on oh, his chest, yes. on his face. On the face, in every part of his body, just for him to be silent and then for them to take him out. And, and you, saw, you saw this happening? So many times, in different detention centres. It's not only broke out. Um, you are going to be on the next flight. That's one of the funny things that they always say. As a joke? Oh, as a joke. The inquiry found widespread evidence of physical violence by staff with unnecessary pain inflicted on detainees, force used inappropriately sometimes on people who were harming themselves, humiliating comments towards two men even as they attempted to take their own lives and men being forcibly moved when they were naked. Don't do it mate, don't do it mate. But it was this incident, secretly filmed by a whistleblower officer for Panorama, that was the worst. A man in extreme distress was restrained, with an officer placing his hand around his neck and whispering this. There were broken men at every turn, people that were just struggling to make it through the day. Uh, Self-harm and suicide attempts were common. And to then see those people uh, being physically abused by uh, the people that were meant to be safeguarding them to make making sure that they were that they were safe and well looked after was really horrifying and really distressing to see. G4S, which ran Brook House, has since lost its contract with the Home Office. It told us. The vast majority of employees carried out their duties to a high standard. We were appalled when a number of former employees acted in a way that was contrary to our values, policies and their training. And for this we are sorry. But the inquiry's chair said she rejected the narrative portrayed by G4S and the Home Office that this was down to a small minority of G4S staff. Understaffing, inadequate regulation, a lack of training and management dysfunction all contributed to this toxic culture. But many of the issues the inquiry investigated persists, they say, under Brook House's new management, the company Serco. One of the most shocking things about this report is that some of the staff who were present and involved in the instance described still work at Brook House under Serco, some of them in senior roles, even though the chair said they showed little or no real reflection on their actions. Now, Serco told us they'd increased staffing, they'd increased uh, training, but their boss was forced to admit during the inquiry that the culture change that he was speaking of did not, in the words of the report, reflect reality. Charity Medical Justice, which offers help to people in detention, says this toxic culture exists elsewhere. These kind of issues could be occurring in any of the big detention centres and the, the issue is that without this type of inquiry we may not know the full extent of it. Victor was held for a month this year near London. They are second class citizen and once you're in detention that's the, the, the policy, that's the, the ideology. 
The chair's furthest reaching recommendation is that asylum seekers should spend a maximum of 28 days in immigration centres. The UK is the only country in Europe to hold them indefinitely, in some cases more than a year. But it's one that puts Chair Eves on a collision course with the Home Secretary, who wants to increase detention centres and the powers to hold people in them for longer. Amelia Jen reporting. Well, the Home Office told us that the government had made significant improvements since the Brook House inquiry and said that they remain committed to learning lessons from that report. Well, Kate Eves, the chair of the inquiry, joins me now. Thanks for coming to the studio. Thank you. Looking at Brook House from those images, bars on the window, um, barbed wire around the perimeter, how's it different from a prison? Well, I think, as I say in my report, the issue is that it's built for the specification of a Category B prison, um, and that's the equivalent of, say, HMP Wandsworth. These are not prisoners that are being held in this environment. They're not it's criminals. They've they're not been charged with a crime. They are people being held for administrative immigration detention purposes. And one of the reasons that I think the 28-day time limit recommendation is so important that it is just not possible to deliver a decent, humane, relaxed regime, which is what requ is required for immigration detainees in a prison environment. I mean, some of the people you detail in the report have been kept there for a year. Is that usual or is that unusual? Um, I, I heard from several witnesses, several just formerly detained people who've been kept there for, for many months, um, over a year in some cases. In fact, we have some statistics in the report about exactly how many people mm. were kept for different periods of time. I think we need to really reflect on the fact that people's mental health deteriorates when they're in detention. There's a, there's a known link between that happening and the distress and anxiety that is caused by the uncertainty of detention is really detrimental. And, and you focused your report on a, a four-month period in 2017. Those were the kind of the salad days of migration, if I can put it like that. And there were not that many people coming over. Now we've got much bigger numbers. So are the conditions even worse than they were then? Well, I think the concern is that when, when this inquiry was announced and when I was appointed as chair, there was a reduction in the use of immigration detention. The government has made clear its intention to increase use. And my report makes no comment on that. This is not about the government policy on immigration sure. more broadly. My fear is that if we don't pay attention to the 33 recommendations that I've made in this report, that we risk the same issues happening again in other detention environments. And do you know whether the conditions right now in Brookhouse are as bad as they were when you inspected it in 2017? Well, so what I've done, so the, the, the period of the report, which was that five-month period in 2017, took very detailed evidence on that period of time. In order to make sure that my recommendations were meaningful, I obviously needed to look at what, if anything, had changed between then and now. I do remain concerned that there are issues around, particularly around safeguarding, and this is safeguarding for people who are especially vulnerable, such mm. as people who have been tortured or who may be suicidal, and also safeguarding around the use of segregation. And I have concerns that there is still a misunderstanding and a misapplication of how those safeguards need to be applied to ensure that the most vulnerable people are not suffering um, and are not subject to extra harm. There's also a report out tonight that Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, stopped the annual inspection of these facilities. I think, I can't comment specifically on, on that announcement. I think, as I make clear in my report, these are places in our society that are closed, that most of us have no experience of. I would really urge people to look at some of the footage from, from the inquiry. It's mm. available on our YouTube site because it is a really clear and visceral insight into exactly what was happening at that time. We need scrutiny and oversight of what happens in these closed spaces in our society. You've inspected prison facilities in the United States, in this country, I don't know about the rest of Europe. Is there any other country in Europe or indeed in the US, that treats people seeking asylum when they wash up on their shores in these kind of facilities I think, for this length of time? I think what's really concerning is, and I have, I've been working in this field for over 25 years and I've seen lots of very distressing things in lots of different places around the world. I think what is particularly striking about what was happening at Brook House is the level and the extent of distress and stress both on the part of detained people, but also the staff who were ill-equipped to deal with some of the complexities that they needed to deal with for people with profound mental health problems in very distressing, distressing situations. Vulnerable people. Absolutely. Um, and there's a real need for a step change in how staff are trained and overseen and managed. Ultimately, whether or not the Home Office contracts other organisations, mm. companies such as G4S or Serco, 
to manage these centres, the responsibility is that of the Home Office. They right. are the ones who are detaining people and it is their responsibility to make sure they are overseeing that process. Okay. Katie, Absolutely. thank you very much indeed for coming in.